In this video, I'm going to go through how to use if statements. One of the most common, but not only places to use if statements, is in validating a form. And I'm going to use a few different approaches here, and I want to walk through the application. You'll notice that I'm working in Dreamweaver. I do find this is my easiest way for development. To test a page, and I'm going off the camera here, I can just go out of the live view, then back to the live view, and any changes that I've made to the JavaScript code will automatically refresh. I'm finding that this is an extremely efficient way to test new code. So just some background on the HTML. I'll go to the source code here for a minute. We have a first name field named F name, last name, L name, email named email, phone named phone, and a submit, submit button actually named submit. All really standard here. So we're going to go into the JavaScript and we're using our standard option to get the element by ID. And I have one function in here. I'm doing two things, actually I have two functions because I've got my onload function, which puts this value in the phone number to demonstrate the proper format that a form should be entered in. And then we call on the click of the submit button and it gives us a bunch of error messages. Let's take a quick look at that. So we have a variable which I've named warning and we do a simple if statement if the value for first name equals equals and this is one of the most important things with an if statement. If you're checking to see if a value is something it's equals equals. If you are assigning a value it's one equals sign. So one equals sign is the assignment operator. Two equals signs next to each other with no spaces between them is the comparison operator. So we're checking to see if nothing is entered. And we do the same thing for each of the first three values. So I'm going to go and put in correct information. And this will let me test and what should happen with everything in here correct is nothing. Except that I have a alert that I left in here to show an error to you or to how to check for an hour error. I'm using alert statements all the time. I use an alert statement to show me what the at position is my, or my at sign is in my email address. So we get a little more complex in checking email. I'm not just checking to make sure that there's nothing here. I'm checking to make sure it's actually formatted with a at sign and a dot. That's the only thing I'm checking for. It's hard to make sure everything's perfect, but any email address should have an at sign and a dot. Now if I don't have an at sign in here, my at position is negative one. So I'm going to just get rid of that here by commenting it out and I'm going to refresh my code. I hit the live button twice. Wants to take it off, wants to put it back on. Now I have an at position where I'm looking for the index of the at sign. I have a dot position where I'm looking for an index of the dot. And now I'm using a multiple if statement. If either the at position is less than zero or the dot position is less than zero, then that item doesn't exist. If either one of those is true, then it's not a valid email address. So let's try this again. So here I'm missing the dot com. So it tells me this is not a valid email address, this is not a valid phone number. Okay, I see a minor error here. Everything should be add, ending with a slash n, which gives me a new line. And I want them to match that is not a valid phone number, that is not a valid email address. Okay, that looks good. So again, I'm going to refresh. And I will put in Mary, and I'm going to say I put the sign in wrong, gmail.com. 
So I have no first name, no last name. That is not a valid email address. That is not a valid phone number. Okay. So it's checking my email for the at sign and the dot sign. As long as they're greater than zero, as long as they're both in there, it's going to come up as valid. Let's talk about the phone number. Let's just put something in each of these so I don't... And all it's checking is that this is not blank. It's not giving a minimum length. It, it gets too complex to get into more than that. So we're going to put in a real email address. It's not, but, well, maybe there is somebody with Mary at gmail.com but it's not me. Okay, so that should fail, follow, follow those validation rules. Now my phone number, this is get put in here to give you a representation of what it should be. Now what it's looking for is numbers with a dash between them. So if I try this, it's all going to be okay. Now I really need to add another piece here that will only give me alert if the alert is not nothing because I'm getting an alert even when there's nothing there. So what I'm going to want to add here is an if warning which is my warning variable equals equals nothing. Actually I want it to be not equal to nothing, then I'll alert a warning. Now I'm doing something here that's sort of questionable. If you have an if statement with just one line under it, technically you don't need the curly brackets. Good programming recommends that you do put in the curly brackets. Just in case you add something else to that later, it prevents problems. So you'll see that I'm doing one line after the if statements, and it's valid, and it works. Many programmers recommend that you actually put in the curly brackets at every if. So I'm going to just put in some samples here. All it's looking for is the at and the dot. And then for my phone, I'm going to put in slashes instead of dashes. I don't check for that because it doesn't matter in this one. So I'm going to hit submit and nothing should happen. Now if one of these, however, should have a letter in it, which you may or may not want to check for because you can have valid phone numbers with letters in them, but they're generally not belonging to specific people. Oh, it should have alerted on that. Let's take a look and see what's happening. All right, let's go in here and deliberately put in a complete error here. We'll leave it blank, see if that's going to alert. Okay, please enter a phone number. And we'll put in all three letters here. And let's see what happens. Okay, that tells us it's not a valid phone number. I think if we have any numbers in here at all, it's going to come up as valid. So if I have, well, that's a symbol, so that should come up as false. That's not a valid phone number. And let's try one. Okay, so it's accepting that. Somehow when that's converting, that's actually converting the M to a number, which is okay. It tells us if we've got it totally wrong. It's not perfect. None of the validations in here are perfect. You can't come up with every error, but if I were to have all symbols or a blank here, that's going to tell me that it's not a valid phone number. So it's not a perfect validation, but since you can have letters and phone numbers, I'm not really that upset with that coming through that way. So again, we have a onload function that displays the pound signs in here to show the correct number format. When we hit submit, we check to make sure that each value is not blank. For email, 
we check for the index of the at sign and the decimal point. If they don't exist, they'll come up as negative one. And then we add that to a warning. The other thing you'll notice here is I'm using the longer format here of warning equals warning plus, but you can just do warning plus equals, which means the same thing. So you can see that we have checked efficiently to make sure without putting insane amounts of code in that we probably have a logical entry in each item on the form. And that's pretty much the best you can do. One of the common things that JavaScript is used for is checking form validations. And this is...